I'm Maeve. If you're new to me, I'm so happy you're here. I know I say that a lot, but it's true. I'm really happy you're here. This song is called Heated. She got to fan herself off. I got to fan myself off. It seemed really appropriate with this heat that we got going on. I'm actually going to make sure that everything, my mic is all hooked up correctly because I did not look at that. And it would be my luck that when I walk away, it's working. All right, cool. Hi, Mira. Squat. We're going to get right into it. We're getting right into it, y'all. Big squats. I mean, it's kind of fast, but so they're not that big. They're like, they're like powerful. They're quick. Get a little heat. <laughs> I'm already warmed up, but I'm going to get you warmed up because you're probably basking in some air conditioning. Oh, Aaron, here comes little mister. You got lucky. You got lucky. If you have a cat or a dog handy, you can use them as a little extra weight. He doesn't like this at all, but he's tolerating it. We're going to go here, here. Get those hips good and warmed up. So we can add some really good strength training on and really get it all like to get in those deep hip stabilizers. You can slow this down if this feels too fast. As a matter of fact, let's slow it down to get full range. Come on, mister. He's like, he just called BS on the fact that I was shaking treats to lure him down and then I didn't give him any. Two more. Take the feet wide, drop. My, my zooming capabilities, like it's really slow for some reason. I restarted, we restarted the internet, I restarted my computer. I'm probably gonna be a little bit behind what I'm saying. I can see that I'm dragging. I'm not dragging. The feet is dragging. Beautiful. Take it over to one side. Just back and forth. Everything that I do can be modified. Got it? So like this could be really small and just high. This could be really deep. Like if you're feeling it, if you want to get way down there, go for it. Four more. Let's go. Four, three, two. Beautiful. You need dumbbells or not. If you got them, you're going to use them. If you don't, you keep it doing. You keep doing you without them. Off to the side. Weights at your shoulders. Reach down. Weights at your shoulders. This is option one. Of course, you can leave this arm movement off 100%. If it feels okay, we're going to swing it up. So it's just like bringing it to the shoulders is a smaller version of taking them up. Sit into that hip. When you swing the weights back or reach, you are loading your glutes more. That's a good thing. Unless it's not a good thing. And only you know that. Like how much juice you want to put into it. That's your call. You look amazing. I just hit myself in the thigh with the weight. Typical Maeve move. Almost out. Bring your weights up. If it's okay, overhead, if not, shoulders. If it's okay, overhead, if not, shoulders or at your side. Get tall. Step it back. Come in halfway. Press it up. Take it up. Back. Halfway in. Bring it in. If this starts to feel like it's too heavy on those shoulders and arms, Go down to one weight, put the weights down, but we're taxing our center, our core, a little more when we have those arms up. So you can do it without the weight, if that's more accessible and safer for you. Whew.
Come on, come on, come on. One more each side, come on. Beautiful, weights down. Well done. If you have ankle weights or these, I use these little bala bands, grab them. If you don't, don't worry. You don't need them, this just gives extra juice. Extra juice. I am gonna give you the option of using yoga blocks. It will give you a little more elevation. I'm gonna show it to you, and then you can decide. So anytime you kind of elevate yourself, I don't wanna say that it makes it easier, but it gives you a little more leverage point. So either on the blocks, if you need to use your forearms because your wrists aren't happy, get them in a really good spot, and then that's gonna make you, that's gonna put your spine in a good spot. I'm gonna go without. So here's what we got. Left knee is down. Right leg goes back. We get a hip extension. We drop the foot. We bring it out to the side. Tuck the right toes. Left knee two times lifts. Left knee down. Hip extension. Take it out to the side. Tuck the toes. Lift the left knee twice. You've got it. Don't overthink it. It's back, it's side, the other knee comes up twice. It's not just about picking up the knee. You could do that like this. That's not it. It's about pushing the ground away. It's about doming the belly and rounding the back to lift. It's a crunch. Come on. Two more. One more, one more, one more. Good, now left foot comes forward. Left foot comes forward. Yeah, yes. Drop and pulse. Here's what I would love for you to get a sense of. Connect to that left foot. Whole foot, toes, heel. Sense of the arch lifting. Right hip is gonna squeeze here. Now can we get a little lower? And can we keep it cl like close to the ground? The knee, that is, it being the knee. So yoga blocks are gonna be super handy here if you need some balance help. Tip forward. Hands can be at the ground or hands can be off the ground. If you're struggling with balance, this is gonna be your bud, or furniture, or a wall. We're here, lift, right leg is lifting. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Belly super strong, right hip is creating this movement. Very much like Warrior Three with a little butt concentrated movement. Eight more, you're not out. Eight, seven, four, three, two. Beautiful, bring it all the way up. Big stretch open, and then bring it all the way down. Hands and knees. I have to turn this way or I'm gonna kick the wall. We have our second side, y'all. You're gonna go back for one, out to the side, Left toes tuck, right knee comes up twice. Left leg goes back and up. Out. Knee twice. So when we're taking this left leg back into hip extension, and then when we're taking it out to the side, we want to stabilize the spine, but without being rigid. So if the spine moves a little bit, great. 
When that knee is drawing up, it's like the equivalent of cat's pose. I like a strong exhale to pull that knee up into the chest, yeah? Get lost in your movement. Notice your thoughts. If I'm not giving you instruction, where does your mind go? Actually, even when I'm giving you instruction, where does your mind go? I you know, I know, I know. You might be tuning me out. I'm okay with that, as long as you're tuning into yourself. Beautiful. Step this right foot forward. Connect to that right foot. Heel, toes, arches lifting. Yes. Squeeze your left cheek. Now, how low can you get? And can you keep it low and kind of hover down there? So what we got happen on, happening here is we got a nice little stretch in the front of that left hip. We got lots of action in the left hip. Right hip working like crazy. Lower. Like you want to kneel down, but you're like, nah. I don't need it. Not out yet, not out yet, not yet. Four, three, two. Hands can be on furniture, on the floor, on blocks. Think warrior three. Lift. Scoop that belly up. Contain the front ribs. If you're not sure what that left hip is doing, put your hand on your butt. Who cares? Do it. Yes. Yes. Let me see you. Yes. So good. Nice solo. You look amazing, y'all. You're doing great, Susan. Last eight, go eight, seven. Beautiful, bring it up. Ah, good work. Bring it up and find a mini band. I'm gonna keep on my little ankle weights because I know I want them later and I'm a little bit lazy sometimes. I just don't feel like having to put them on again. But if you have them on and you've had enough with them, give yourself a break. There's a lot of things that you're going to see in repetition if you take my class with some regularity. They are things that are good for you all the time. Like this. These little mini bands, if you don't have one, I do suggest getting one. You can do it without, but they are a fantastic little tool. And they're probably the least expensive piece of fitness equipment you can get. About two bucks. So we're going to fine tune this. And so when we do things with regularity, when you practice something regularly, the idea is to get more proficient at it, right? To, to kind of own it in your body and to refine it. So looking down at your feet, ideally your toes are straight ahead. That's what I'm looking for. I always think about leading from the outside of my heel. So I lead the movement from the outer heel. I don't always do a good job of saying why we're doing things. These build strength in your outer hips, in the deep stabilizing muscles of your hips, which are critical for healthy hips, back, you name it. Strong glutes. And then when we add a squat in, we're adding in the benefits that you get from squatting. Glute max, glute min, 
medial working when we move sideways. And it's also a stabilizer, even when you're just squatting. It's kind of boring to hear why we do things, but sometimes it's good to just like, and then someone's talking about something, you're like, oh, I know that. I didn't know I knew that, but I know that. Try to sprinkle it in here and there. One more each way. Keep the band. Take one leg out to the side. All right, so I, I, I've mentioned this a few times and someone asked me to clarify it last time. I always think of a sandwich here. This is my bread coming in. I'm the, I'm the yummy, tasty middle of the sandwich. The bread is coming in. The bread is my abdominals and my glutes. And they're holding me in. Holding all the good stuff out so you're not losing like any jelly out of the side. Yeah? Be a sandwich. Leg goes out. Oh my goodness. That got hot fast. Woo! Again. Yes. Yes. Three, two, one. Set it up. Find your sandwich. Second side. I love how I have my dumbbells. I have my mini bands. I have my mini ball. I have a towel. And I have feline greenies. Whoo, my goodness, second side is always a burner. Why? Because we just worked this hip moving and now it has to stabilize. This hip was your stabilizer, so it was tired from stabilizing and now it's gotta be a mover. Sandwich, bam, eight. That's not enough. We're gonna do another eight after this. Sorry to be a liar. It's not a liar, I'm just retracting what I said. Four, three, two, band off. Okay, we're gonna lie down. You need your mini ball if you have one. If you don't, a foam roller would work or the floor, or the floor works. I'm sweaty, I gotta put this, this towel down. I don't know if my mat can handle it right now. It's too early in the morning for my mat to be this sweaty. Ball between the shoulder blades if you have it. Left leg is down. Right leg is lifted, but it's on an angle. So it's not straight up. So if your hamstrings are tight, don't worry about it. Take it out on an angle. Lift, lift, wrap. More and more, push that left leg down, hold that right leg up. If you're feeling like your hip flexors are just cramping on you, consider turning the hip a little open. Two more. Beautiful, release that leg down, wrap the ball. Right leg stays down, push the right foot down. Left leg is up on an angle, lift, wrap. So if you're on the ground, I'm saying wrap, that's not gonna work. <laughs> Cause you can only go so far. If you're on a foam roller or if you're on a ball, you have the ability to kind of wrap back around controlling extension, which is a really, really good thing to be able to do. If you wanna turn that hip open a little bit, go for it. Keep pushing that right leg down. Four, three, two, both legs down, wrap around the ball or roller if you're using it. If not, just rest on the floor. Both knees bend, feet are flat. If you don't need your hands behind your head, bring them at your side. 
Little shift to the side. Little shift to the side, so a little side bend. Keep it up, keep it up, it being your chest. Keep your torso up. So let's fine tune, let's refine. There's energy, there's power on the reach. Can you control on the way back? Can you get just as much work on the way back as on the reach forward? Yes, almost out. Last one, beautiful. Ball roller come out. You can use a yoga block for the next thing if you don't have a foam roller or a ball. You can also just be on the ground. I'm just giving you the, the rundown of all your options. Bridge your hips up, sacrum on the ball. Take a moment here. Kind of move around a little bit. Notice where your pelvis is. We want to neutralize not just the spine, the neutralizing the pelvis and the spine as one big component piece. So your spine's not going to be totally neutral. I should have qualified that because your neck is not. But your low back, we're looking for the low back, mid back to be pretty, pretty neutral. Not arched, not tucked. And then knees come up. So setup is always important because it's how you lay your exercises onto a strong foundation. If the foundation's subpar, the exercises will be not as good. I don't want to say that they will be subpar, but they might. All right, nice and strong here. Arms off the ground if you feel pretty stable here. And then you'll just notice that you have to use more deep lying muscles, more transverse, more deep abdominals and deep core muscles to stabilize. You also have the opportunity then when the arms come up to see, am I really centered or do I need to adjust this? You can just stay here working on the stability or we're gonna alternate these legs down, bring it up. If you feel pretty good here, you can add the arm. It's opposite arm, opposite leg. Oh, mama roll off. That's gonna happen if you challenge yourself. I want any time you feel like you're falling out of a pose or an exercise. I want you to acknowledge that it's probably because you challenged yourself that that happened. That's a good thing. We don't want just status quo here. It's in those challenging moments that we gain wisdom, strength. All the good stuff. Keep that spine nice and strong, or I should say keep all the muscles around the spine nice and strong so your spine's not moving all over the place. Take feedback, y'all. Not from me, from yourself. Like if right now your back started to bother you, what would you do? Or what are you doing? Are you just pushing through it like it'll go away? It's not going to go away. Adjust. Maybe make the range of motion smaller. Maybe take away one component, the arms or the legs. Or maybe it's the ball, maybe you put yourself on the floor. Last two, you're almost out. Beautiful, bring it down. All the way, take the whatever it is you're using out. Just let your spine neutralize. All right, if you got a ball, you're gonna use it. You can also use a shirt or a pillow here. Maybe a roller, it's a little awkward. Left leg, I have the ball behind my left leg. It doesn't matter which leg you do. You're gonna keep that ball nice and strong. We're gonna bridge up, bring it down. So here's the thing, not everyone feels good when they're doing something asymmetrical like this, meaning one leg is doing one thing, leg, the other leg's doing the other. Ways to move around it. One, don't do it. Put both feet down and just bridge. Two, make your range of motion smaller. Get rid of some of the apparatus. There's only one thing we're using. So there's ways to kind of fine tune so that it works if it doesn't feel good. 
but sometimes it just is not good on your body. And don't don't fight it. Just put both feet down and bridge, and you'll be great. Last two, last two. Good, bring your hips down, keep the ball, bring your hands behind your head, extend the other leg out. Crunch across. So here's the thing with twisting. I will say this every single time we do this and I will remind you that I'm gonna say it every single time. I don't care about your elbow, because I could do this like this and bring my elbow across and I have not twisted at all. I care about your rib cage, I care about your shoulder. And I want those two things to come across. And you can almost feel like you're pulling back with the other arm to kind of help facilitate that movement. Two more. Last one. Bring your knees in, so good. If you're using a ball, switch it. Second side single leg bridge, or if you're just straight up bridging, set yourself up. Lift, down. More ways to fine tune this. Try to pull this right knee toward your chest more, or the, the lifted leg, since I told you it didn't matter which side you started on. Connect to that bottom foot, feel. Heel, center of the heel. Big toe, pinky toe. Notice the behavior of your knee. Is it like collapsing in or falling open? See if you can keep that bottom leg, that pressing one, like a rock, like solid. Last two. Last one. Oh my gosh. Keep that knee up. Extend the other leg out. Twist. Cross. This helps you kind of like pull to cross. Yes, yes. Rib cage, shoulder across. Last one. Whoo! Release the ball, cross ankle to thigh. Doesn't matter which side. Open that knee. Consider lifting the legs up. Consider straightening the non-bent leg, well they were both bent, but consider, <laughs> hence the straightening option, the back leg. This is why I should use rights and lefts. The supporting leg. Bring it back down. Second side, cross ankle to knee. Open the knee, open the hip. Like the front of this inner thigh. Get a little sense of that outer hip starting to work a little, and then if it feels good, lift up. Maybe straighten the supporting leg. Good, bring both feet down. Really easy bridge. Lift up, open up the shoulders, open up the heart. Get a stretch in the front of the belly. So more of a yoga bridge than a fitness bridge, so like a big back bend here if it feels okay. Melt your spine down from the middle back to the low back. Hug your knees into your chest, rock up to seated. You're amazing, cross at your shins. Give me a nice easy twist, give yourself a nice easy twist, really. It's not for me, it's for you. Switch it. Come back up to center, big inhale. 
bring your hands into your heart. Honor that you, for some of you, it's not the start of your Monday, but that you did this on a Monday. You started your week. No matter where you are, this is the start of your week. I'm so thankful that you moved with me. Again, I'm Maeve McCaffrey. Thanks for being here.